is official. MAPS 4 has passed in Oklahoma City. From the Oklahomans Newsroom, I'm Dave Morris, joined here in the studio by our David Dishman. MAPS for the win, I believe, is the headline that uh, could be in upcoming editions of the Oklahoman. I think that's the plan as of right now. It's, it's looking like a landslide so far. You've been all over this coverage from the very beginning of our coverage of MAPS 4 and certainly throughout tonight. Uh, if you've engaged with this reporter on Twitter, well, if you didn't, you should have because it's been an engaging conversation. <laughs> but right from the beginning, uh, as soon as the early precincts and the early voting results came in, uh, MAPS 4 was way ahead from the beginning. The yes vote, I should say, was ahead. Yeah, it's been, we've been above 60% since the, it was just the absentee and early voting. Uh, the last I checked as I walked in here, we were approaching 70%, maybe a little over 70% with nearly 80% of precincts reporting. So um, it's not been close the whole night, no. Which brings the question and has brought the question on Twitter all night long. How does this compare to other votes? And you explained, hey, there's a little bit more mechanics that have to go into this before we officially know. Yeah, it's uh, so I've been having some conversations with some folks um, and it's looking like it may be the largest margin of victory in any sales tax vote initiative in kind of modern Oklahoma City history. Um, it, the, I think the closest one that we've found so far is the MAPS-1 uh, sales tax extension vote. MAPS-1 and actually didn't cover all its costs the first time, and so they voted to extend it six months in order to, to gather the, all their funds to fund all their projects, and by that time projects were rolling, I think. Uh, we, you know, it was, it was a, a wide margin of victory on that vote. Uh, this one, I think, could surpass it, depending on final outcome of everything. Before we get into uh, what happens next, uh, as far as the logistics of this goes, um, what were some of the other questions that you were uh, handling on Twitter tonight? Oh, I mean, I saw a lot of different things, um, kind of how much the, the voter turnout was looking like. Um, and to that point on voter, yeah. voter turnout, you explained, hey, if the metro has X amount of population, but registered voters is actually yeah. a smaller amount of that, but it looks like perhaps over 10 percent perhaps is going to come out to voting on this. Maybe. It's, it's, it's getting close. I was talking to uh, our, actually our boss, uh, uh, Don Meekway, one of the editors here, and he, he was looking, and he's, it's going to be close to whether or not we get to 10 percent okay. uh, voter turnout, which is obviously not very high. It's, it's kind of crazy that um, for a one, nearly $1 billion tax initiative that's going to affect people throughout the city, uh, to get that low a turnout is, is a little disappointing, I'm sure, uh, for many folks. Um, but, you know, for those who did come, they, they voted overwhelmingly for it. So. Kayla Branch has been at the watch party for the MAPS 4, uh, yes, I guess, watch party. And uh, she reports that uh, Mayor David Holt says, quote, we have uh, never been more united. One OKC fits right into his campaign. Mm -hmm. And maybe the voter turnout's a little bit less than what they wanted, but there's no one more ecstatic about this than the mayor. Oh, he's been all about it since day one. Um, he has... Uh, he has been the most active Twitter person I think I've ever seen today, uh, retweeting just about anybody who has posted any sort of hashtag maps for voted, I voted sticker. Um, I saw a lot of those on Twitter and social media today, today and that was almost a guaranteed mayor retweet for those. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure how he was pulling that off. but. Yeah, he's, he's been all about it, um, and I'm sure he's, he's uh, very excited to, to have that taken care of. You mentioned on Twitter earlier our update uh, after 7 o'clock after the polls closed. It was the Dave and Dave show, Dave Morris and Dave Dishman. And I right. guess we have to say that the, the first Dave of OKC, Mayor David Holt, yeah. also appeared in some of the footage there. Yeah, we need to get him in. I mean, get, get a trio. Add, <laughs> add, add as many as we can. That, I think that, that would have to happen. Um, we should do that. It'd be a yeah. good conversation. Uh, another good conversation before we get out of here, though, is what happens next and what's the mechanics yeah. of this? So people might think, okay, MAPS Force passed. There's 16 projects on that. When do I see any of these 16 projects? They aren't going to pop up tomorrow. Uh, they're not, you're not even going to get <laughs> taxed for these tomorrow. Uh, the current tax, uh, the one cent sales tax, it's currently being assessed on your purchases is the Better Streets Safer City Tax. And that doesn't come off the books until the end of March. Uh, so when that expires, MAPS 4 takes effect April 1st. So you're not going to see any change at the register. Uh, your tax rate's going to stay the same. Uh, but what the purpose is is going is to switch from the Better Streets Safer City 
uh, tax to the MAPS 4 tax. And then once that, those collections start coming in, uh, these projects don't start happening until the money is collected and the city council will decide which projects go first. That was a question I got on Twitter uh, earlier, which do we know what's going to be the first thing done? It's what's a solid the order question. of operations? There's 16 yeah. projects here, what happens Absolutely. first? Absolutely. And it's ultimately up to the city council. And, and like I said, with the money collection, we don't know if it's going to come in really fast or if we're going to, if it's going to be slow going. Um, it's hard. It's an eight year tax. So we don't know if there's a recession around the corner, what could happen that could, that could affect those collections. So, so you can go online to oklahoman.com. We have plenty of uh, charts and calculators of how this impacts you individually. Uh, but you guys did a really good job when you were compiling all this information of taking a look at the previous maps, one, two, and three, um, of, of how much that budget came in uh, under or over, because you mentioned um, the recession, and that's one of the things that they kind of taken in, into account uh, when they're budgeting for these maps things is, is what if worst case scenario hits. Yeah, they, they've built these these budgets, these 16 projects are estimated to cost about $978 million. Uh, some in the news, including our coverage, we've referenced sometimes that it's uh, nearly billion dollar tax. Well that's because uh, we don't know how much that one cent sales tax is going to collect over the course of eight years. Uh, they've looked at it and projected into the best of their understanding based on Oklahoma City's growth, population, current trends, potentially future trends. They expect that we can safely assume that we will get at least $978 million out of this tax. So that's what they budgeted, budgeted it for. Uh, however, if they hit $978 million in seven years, that tax will continue for the remainder of the year uh, and they'll find ways to, to, re to use that money. What The city council will decide what that surplus is used for. If it shorts, uh, again, if there's a recession that hits for some reason, we under collect, uh, then something would, would be decided about how to bridge that gap in, the, in MAPS 1. They voted to extend the tax by six months and in those six months they covered uh, what they needed. Uh, I guess that's a decision we'd have to make down the line if it were to if it were to short. So good stuff, good explanation too. You. Again, you can find more of these resources and plenty of archive coverage of the 16 projects. And I believe we had like an 18-part series yeah. with that. Oh, there's plenty of reading if you, if you want to go back and read. And you can do so online at Oklahoman.com. You can find plenty of coverage from tonight's activities online as well, and in Wednesday's editions of the Oklahoma. Big thanks to all of our colleagues in the newsroom and out there covering things today. And Mr. Dishman, thanks for your time here in studio. Thank you, appreciate it.